Hey everyone, Caesar from Lightworks.net here. Um, just for the ones, uh, for the people who don't know me, um, I'm the owner of Lightworks. I've uh, been dealing with uh, HID systems for over 10 years, retrofitting, uh, on-site installations. When people come to uh, my shop, I am the person installing the kits as of right now and always was. And uh, I have a lot of experience with these kits. And this video, the purpose of this video is going to be diagnosing a bad HID bulb or something's not firing up or both of your lights aren't turning on after after you've installed an HID system. You know, some tips and tricks and some things to look out for. So I'm gonna go over first the basics of how the systems are comprised. And this is gonna be a two part video. The first part is going to be um, diagnosing uh, a light bulb that is out on just one side. Second part of the video is going to be when you've lost both of your lights, you know, what do you do? What do you look into? Um, I got three setups here. The first is your standard rebase setup. You got a Morimoto ballast, an igniter, and the actual bulb itself. Morimoto XB 35 watt ballast. It's the newest generation. The computer, we call this the computer, the ballast computer, is separate from the igniter. So as you can see, these are separate pieces. Is it good? Is it bad? You know, that's up to you to decide what's good about it is that if one of them fails, you don't have to replace both. Majority of aftermarket ballasts are going to be set up uh, differently. It's all going to be inside one larger, uh, you know, box. It's going to have igniter built in. Um, I believe the purpose of this is to put the igniter closer to the bulb, which prevents issues down the line. However, what I do like about it is that these are interchangeable. Or let's say you want to move to the D2S uh, you know, igniter, you're going to go right to that and you're going to eliminate the need for all this. Okay, just get up a little closer there. Once again, ballast computer. D2S igniter is all one piece right to the bulb. Here you have a computer going into an amp igniter, D2S adapter, which is not an igniter. That red part is simply an adapter going to the bulb. So there is definitely a benefit to that part of that system. All right, but just like everything else, you are going to have this separate. So let's say you want to change from an amp setup. Let's say you got a 9006 bulb, you're doing a retrofit. You're going to go right into the D2S igniter. It's going to be direct connection, eliminating the need for all this equipment. I am going to get into why that's beneficial, but I'm also going to get into how that could fail. All right. So the easiest thing to do is when you have a problem with your setup, it, uh, only one side, of course, you're going to swap the components. So a lot of people say, well, I can't test my components. I don't have the proper equipment or I don't know how to do that. It's actually really, really straightforward. You're simply going to take this one ballast and move it from, uh, you know, side to side. If the problem follows, you know, this ballast is at fault. If nothing changes, you're going to move the igniter next, whether it's an amp igniter or a D2S igniter, you're going to swap sides. You're going to try to track down which part is at fault because only one part is typically going to be at fault if you have a failure to ignite one side. Okay, once you pinpoint that, you know, the product, you're going to get back to us. We're going to handle the warranty directly through Lightworks and we're going to get your replacement part to get your system back up and running. So what's the downside of this system? Well, we make straight adapters and angled adapters. You know, this is considered a weak point, but sometimes it's, you know, mandatory. On certain setups, the exit hole is very tight, so you might need to use something like this rather than that. That's a little bit more bulky, but these are much more problematic. It's best to go directly to the source of, uh, you know, directly to the HID bulb. That way it's going to have the least amount of problems. But that's your three setups right there. All right. Once again, you're just swapping the component from side to side. Um, another thing is before you even get into it, what I want you to do is if you have a problem on one side, have somebody turn on the lights on and off, on and off, and you're sitting next to the light and just looking at everything and listening. The reason why I say listening is because if you hear some kind of zapping sound, almost like a mosquito light zap, um, there's usually an issue between the igniter and the actual bulb. Now these are separate. Once again, this is a Morimoto only type of design. The bulb is separate from the wiring on the bulb. 
the pins in there can get dislodged. There could be an issue here. There can be some kind of resistance. If you hear like a zap sound, most likely you don't have an issue. You have a connection issue. So that's one thing I want you to look out for. Also, um, if you notice anything before the light went out, for example, the light bulb changed color, most likely you have a bad light bulb. But bulbs dim and fade and sometimes prematurely die over time. So that would be a lifespan of maybe a few years. Let's say after three years you have a light go out, um, you know, you might have an HID bulb out. If it's a premature failure and your light bulb looks fine, it might be the ballast, it might be the igniter. We've had a good, uh, you know, low failure rate with these products, but, you know, issues do occur and we want people to be aware on how to diagnose your own system. You don't have to go to a shop or a specialist to diagnose an error with the system. So you can easily do this yourself. Um, but that's about it. The ballast, you know, you can't test these. We have a lot of people telling us, uh, hey, I put my, uh, you know, my test light to it or my multimeter. I'm not getting anything out of the ballast. You're not supposed to. You, you don't want to test anything. The only thing you want to test is the input from the harness, which we're going to go over in the next section of the video. You don't ever want to be sticking anything in here or into the D2S igniter and seeing if power comes out. That's a high voltage line. It's unsafe and it's not proper. Um, you're only going to get power feeding through it if the light bulb ignites. All right, that's how it works. So, you know, hopefully I've addressed, uh, you know, how to diagnose or how to troubleshoot uh, one HID, either bulb or ballast that's gone bad. And once again, once you've diagnosed it, get back to your seller, whether it's retrofit source, whether it's Lightworks, whether it's another authorized Morimoto distributor. All right, but this is mainly for the Morimoto products. I'm not going to get into other brands because this is Morimoto specific equipment, but the same goes for other brands. Just move the whole ballast from side to side, move the light bulb, and diagnose it yourself. All right, I'm going to move this stuff off the table. The next part of the video is going to focus on wiring harnesses. If both of your lights go out, it's never an individual part it's never an individual part on either side. One side will not cause the other side to go out. So if you have a direct connection or a CAN bus ballast, which is not shown here, um, you're not going to be doing anything with this video. This is if you're using a relayed wiring harness. The first one we have here is a single xenon relayed wiring harness. I'm not going to unravel everything, but these are the newest Morimoto HD relay wiring harness. They're dual relays, one for each side. Uh, they got waterproof sockets, waterproof relays, everything is labeled. However, if both of your lights go out, you have an issue with certain things, okay? There's an input into here, okay? That's from your factory low beam wiring or whatever you're using to trigger to have the light bulbs, you know, to have the ballast powered up off the battery. So if there's an issue, the first thing you want to do is look into here. Is this tight? Have the connections moved? Is anything funny with this? Okay, sometimes there can be corrosion in this plug. Sometimes the pins can get loose. Sometimes there's an issue with it just in general. But if power is not coming in here, these relays are not gonna be able to pull power off the battery and send power to the ballasts. Next, you have a fused line that goes to the battery. Pop this little cover. Sorry about that. Guess I'm not really prepared. Anyways, there's a fuse line in here. You're gonna pop that cover, check if the fuse is still intact. If it's blown, you most likely have a, a bad ballast or a short in your system somewhere. Um, in my experience, these don't usually blow that often. It's there as a safeguard, however, that's not an issue. If you've diagnosed your other issue, uh, you know, one side not working, and you still can't seem to figure out what's going on, Check the relays. I'm trying to get these off right now, but the relays do slide off, and you can see how everything is set up. So under here, you're going to pull these off, and you're going to inspect these relays. These power up each light individually. So it's important to see if there's any corrosion. You could have a failed relay. 
if you believe you might have a failed relay, swap these relays left to right. I don't have a screwdriver and I just spent a few minutes trying to get it off, but I couldn't. Next thing is, um, I have this capacitor out here. It's called a capacitor link cap. People call it a capacitor. Um, these are popular on um, pulse width modulation vehicles, uh, DRL systems that run through the low beams. Um, you know, something that doesn't provide a steady power source. So the, the capacitor smooths out the power flow going into the relay. If the power is not smooth and consistent going into the relay, you're gonna hear buzzing from these relays. That could cause serious strobing and flashing of the lights. If you have that, not only are you gonna hear the relays buzzing, you can feel them as well, but you're also gonna see your lights strobing very fast. So you don't wanna have that on you want to turn the lights off immediately and plug this guy in. If you already have it plugged in and it's still not working, a very, very common mistake is the polarity is not proper. So you can see this plug, it's got red on the right. That's the side that the power needs to feed out through. This gets grounded off. It's a capacitor. Body ground, chassis ground, whatever you want to do. And this goes right into the input for the harness. So instead of plugging in your factory input there, you're gonna plug your factory input into here. Once again, if it's not proper, flip it, and that might just solve your issue right then and there. So in order for this capacitor to work, the power has to go through the right side of this plug. So once again, you're only gonna use this on the single Xenon relays. We find people are still ordering these capacitors, even for eight, you know, for bi-xenon harnesses, they're not required. You're not going to be using it. You're only going to be using one of these capacitors, and it's always going to be on the relayed wiring harness. And this only goes for certain American vehicles, German vehicles, anything that uses a pulsed uh, power source. So even though we don't see it with our eyes, um, it's not a smooth and consistent power flow. And without that, the HID system is not going to get power properly. Sorry. Okay, last piece. It's the Morimoto Moto Control by Xenon wiring harness. It's the same type of setup, except it does not have a dual relay. It's got one large relay. Remember, follow the instructions on the back of this. It says mount it vertically. So it should always be sitting in your engine bay like this. Otherwise, water and, you know, water can collect in this plug, water can collect in the bottom of this plug. Even though it's all sealed nicely, we recommend dielectric grease in there. If you have a problem with this, you know, both of your lights go out or the high beams, this gets a little bit more complicated because this also controls your high beams. Unplug this right away. If you see any kind of issues that you can't trace back to an individual component, such a bulb or a ballast, unplug this and check for corrosion. If you see corrosion in there or the pins are not lined up or the pins are broken off, you know that's your issue. If you don't see anything in there, Plug this back in and start checking other things. Make sure there's no corrosion in the main plug. That's an H13 plug. Make sure all the pins are lined up once again. Same thing you're gonna do for the rest of the harness. You're gonna check that fuse like we had before. You're gonna check all these. Once again, corrosion, loose pins, anything. Anything like that, you know, corrosion and rust and stuff like that is gonna cause resistance and it could, you know, not give you a strong enough signal or not a strong enough ground and you're not gonna have the ballast fire up. So weak ground, for example, can cause a ballast not to fire up. But that's about it. I mean, uh, we went over uh, how to test individual components, how to test um, if both of your lights not working, you're always gonna go to the wiring harness, depending on which one you have. You know, these are little things that you can do on your own to diagnose. So don't be so quick to say, well, my light bulb is out, it's the light bulb itself. No, it doesn't always work that way. Uh, if, a, if a light bulb is defective within a few months, obviously there's an issue there. But if it's over time, you got three, four, or five years on the system and then the light goes out, yeah, I might think it's a light bulb. But otherwise, if it's an early failure, it might point to a ballast, it might point to an igniter, or it might be installation error, which a lot of it is. I recommend dielectric grease on all these connections pull off these relays. You're gonna need a screwdriver as I struggled with that, as you saw, um, because these are nice and tight and they got seals inside. Pull that off, uh, dielectric grease, dielectric grease. Anywhere you make a connection, dielectric grease. You know, these are all sealed connections, but sometimes water still gets through. I have a lot of experience with people coming back. 
uh, you know, after a few years and the failure is just because there was some corrosion or some kind of rust or, you know, the corrosion caused the metal to break and then you have an issue with a connection. Very all simple things, but they can be, you know, um, avoided if you take proper precaution when you're installing it. I see a lot of people, this is just flopping around in the engine bay. These are upside down. It cannot be that way. There's mounting brackets on here. That way everything is set up properly. And, you know, like the saying goes, mount it high and dry. You don't want this flopping around. You want everything zip tied and uh, you want it away from water. So never spray water or anything at these uh, relays or any of the connections. Um, but that's about it. I think I've went over a lot of different things here. If you have any questions, um, you know, you can leave comment in this video or on Facebook or on Instagram. Please check out our website, lightworks.net. Uh, we're distributors for uh, Morimoto and uh, we have all these components on our website and we offer a very hassle-free warranty uh, procedure but you have to follow the guidelines and you have to do sometimes you have to do your own diagnosis if you did not come on site locally to have it installed but we look forward to hearing from you hopefully not when you have an issue but when you need any kind of parts and uh, once again my name is caesar with lightworks.net and thanks a lot for watching our video